Hi, everyone. Um, hi. <laughs> so this talk is governmental, but I won't pretend like I'm a political activist on the front lines of every issue. My name is Maya Ghanim, and I've always been interested in science and math. In fact, I've been so interested in these subjects that politics and law seem too risky and controversial for me to be involved in. In my school, there's a lot of amazing programs, like Youth in Government, Mock Trial, Panther Prowler, the Youth City Commission, and they're all great ways for students to be exposed to government. But because of my distaste for controversy, I've always felt like I was in a separate bubble of sciencey nerds. But I had a pivotal moment where I realized that things don't have to be separate in this way. The opt-out policy of Conejo Valley School Board was brought up in my history class. As you can see, it's been in local headlines recently. And my friend James, who actually is a speaker tonight, brought a copy of the policy to our class and explained its importance. He said that, one, the policy would require teachers to send syllabi to all parents regarding any explicit content that students will read before the students can read them. And two, the policy would allow a school board of parents to directly filter what kind of information students are learning in all Conejo Valley schools. This is when I woke up. I realized that this school board had a lot of influence on what we learn every single day. This was a small local government that could cause a lot of change. And although the policy was politically controversial, I decided that I couldn't let it pass by this time. And I needed to do something and become involved. So I attended my first Conejo Valley School Board meeting. I wasn't sure what to expect, but I was pleasantly surprised to see how many people attended. There were 80 speakers who spoke for or against the policy before the board decided that it would pass. At some points, I could feel a very palpable tension on both sides of the aisle. But it was so amazing to see the whole community come together and get things done. The meeting lasted for six hours, and a decision was met at midnight. But if the community didn't come together and call attention to this issue, the policy would have passed without any compromises, without any revisions, and without our general knowledge. But I noticed something interesting at the board meeting. A lot of the speakers, just like me, reported that this was the very first meeting they had ever attended. Unless there was a pressing issue that demanded their attendance, most people just didn't become as involved in our local governments. One of the speakers had a career in statistical analysis, and she said that when she surveyed 5,000 people from the Conejo Valley community, 70% of the people did not support the policy. So why weren't they there? This is when I started to finally realize a trend. We don't participate unless we feel forced to. We prefer to stay passive in our own little boxes instead of being active in our own communities, instead of reaching out, making compromises, and getting things done. So this idea remained in my mind. And the day after the school board meeting, I talked to my fellow Science Olympiad members, and I asked them if they had any opinion on the opt-out policy. Most of them would shrug, saying that they didn't think that the policy really mattered to them. They had grandiose scientific aspirations in prestigious universities, but they didn't feel like they would fit in to a school board meeting. Admittedly, I can see myself reacting in the same way. I understand the feeling of wanting to shy away from controversial topics and stay in your own little bubble. But this school board meeting remained in my subconscious. 
I looked at the Conejo Valley School website, which lists the agenda for weekly meetings and the policies that the school, um, school board has passed. I found that the board passes policies for all of our subjects, science, math, English, history, the arts, athletics. And these were things that I thought that Common Core or the California District of Education took care of. But this school board of parents had a lot of influence on what we learn in our schools. But most importantly, this school board has the ability to make our schools safer. That is crucial, especially in our current environment. And since these policies affect all of us, it would do us all good to raise awareness of local governments. I continue my investigation and looked at other governments in California to see if they had as big of an impact on our daily lives. I found that in California, 898 pieces of legislature was passed in 2017 alone. A lot of the legislation uh, is pretty interesting because the California public isn't generally aware of what's being passed. For example, I found one local law in San Francisco that said, sunshine is guaranteed to the masses. This is an actual law in San Francisco. And although there are some pretty interesting laws that get passed, there's also really important laws that shape our lives every day. They deal with driving, voter processes, gun rights, sexual assault. And these bills and laws affect us all. And we all need to be there, involved with the things that affect our lives every single day. We the people, all the people, whether you like science or math, or art, or history, or reading, or athletics, we all have the right to be there, connected with our government. We all have something that we can offer, regardless of age, or status, or education, we all have a voice. But there has been a lot of separation between the people and the government lately. It seems as though we have forgotten the philosophy of our founding fathers. The people and the government are not just connected. They are synonymous. The people are the government, and the government is the people. But I think we can start building and maintaining connections again with our government. I know that on a national scale, these can be big aspirations. But we always can start small. The Conejo Valley School Board will be having member elections on November 6 of 2018. As a minor, I will not be able to vote yet, as long with many people in this audience. But that's OK. We can still go and participate. Go home and push your parents to vote. Pester them. Plead with them. Bother them. Integrate them with the framework of our wonderful, beautiful society that we are neglecting. And maybe one day, high school students will also be able to vote in board elections. This has been quite a journey for me, and more pivoting realizations come to light every single day. My goal now is to apply my scientific knowledge to help solve political issues. For example, I'm currently obsessed with a liquid metal battery. It's by Donald Sadoway, a professor at MIT, who coined the technology as the link to renewable energy. I'm doing a year-long research paper on whether this technology can be used for three buildings in Thousand Oaks. And I have some social media pages about my journey, and there are about other ways that you can be involved in local governments. You can take a picture if you want, by the way. Um, <laughs> Um, so I hope you guys can support me as I try to bring some proposals to legislation. But there's a lot of other easier ways to be involved in government. If you have any issue that you care about, you can always check to see what laws have been passed re recently regarding the issue. Voting, calling legislature legislators, 
and attending meetings all have an impact on the laws that get passed. We need to build and maintain connections again with our government. And in order to do so, we need consistent participation from all sides of the aisle. Thank you so much.